Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Absolute Minimum. This time I'll be talking about how to use Git from inside SpaceMax using a plugin called Magit. The proper pronunciation may actually be Magit, but I think of it as Magic Git, hence Magit. Magit is an interface for Git specific to Emacs that aims to allow you to do everything you can do in the command line with Git inside Emacs in a much more easy and intuitive way. It is my personal opinion that it very much succeeds in doing so. Seriously, before Magit, I used to use Git only very sparingly. This plugin changed how I work so deeply that now committing and pushing my work is as ingrained in me as saving my files. What you're seeing on screen right now is a vanilla SpaceMax install with the Git layer enabled. I've cloned one of my repositories, made some changes to it, and we'll be using it for today's video. Starting to use Magit is very, very straightforward. There are only two shortcuts of note for beginners. Space GS to initiate Magit's git status. Uh, you can also do this with meta x Magit status. And space GB to initiate git blame. This can also be done with meta x Magit blame. Most everything you'll want to do will happen from inside the transient buffer that opens when you run Magit status. This is basically a transient state buffer with a number of options that you can take. From the top, it shows what branch and commit your current git head is at, as well as showing you some information about the upstream branch and tags. Below that, you'll see a number of sections. If there have been changes in your repository, you'll see a section called unstaged changes, where any tracked files will show up if they have been changed. Note that these section headings are collapsible using tab, similar to org headings. If I go down to one of the change files now and hit tab there, it'll also show a diff of the changes in this file. This is of course very useful because you don't need to keep fumbling with the status and diff commands separately like you do in normal git, and you can see the diff for only the files that you're interested in inspecting. You can hit enter on any one of these files to navigate straight to it as well. You also see a section called recent commits. This one is pretty self-explanatory. You can go to it and hit enter on any of the commits to inspect them individually as well. The resulting buffer can be navigated as if it's a normal file, and you can also quit it using Q. So let's commit a file. To do this, just navigate the cursor to the file that you want to commit and press S. Note that this will create a new section called stage changes. Now we will commit only part of a second file. To do this, let's navigate the cursor to the second file and hit tab to expand out the diff. We can then go down to the lines that we want to commit. Use shift V to enter a visual selection mode and use J and K to expand that selection. And when we have the right area selected, just press S to stage that hunk. Now this file shows up under both the unstaged and staged section because it has both unstaged and staged components. And if you tab out the staged one, it'll show only the lines that we have staged so far. All right, let's go ahead and commit this. Wait, we're still on the master branch. I don't know about you, but I don't push directly to the master branch and instead prefer using the pull request model. As such, we need to create a new branch. Thankfully, you can do that from this screen. In general, to understand what options are available to you from this screen, you can simply press question mark and it will pop up a new buffer showing a number of additional shortcuts that can be used. We see that B means branch, and under the checkout section, we can see that using C, we can check out a new branch. If we press C now, we first get an option to pick a starting point. In this case, that's master. And hitting enter on that, we get an option to name our new branch. Now that we're in a new branch, we can switch back and forth between this branch and the master branch by using the BB shortcut. Note that pressing BB gives you a helm buffer to search for and switch to branches. With the new branch, we can finally commit. Can you guess what the shortcut for committing would be? Uh, you can also hit question mark in the screen to find it. Yep, it is C. This opens a new buffer that allows you to set a number of flags, which honestly, I've never used. There's also a number of options below, out of which only one is of interest to us, and that is C for commit. So pressing the second C, we get yet another new buffer. This one lets you write a main commit message in the first line and a longer commit message below it. This window also gives you a summary of the files in this commit, and you can also navigate to the window that just opened up and inspect the diff that you're committing. At this point, we can hit comma comma to actually commit the file. Note that if you ever wanted to back out of this step, for whatever reason, you can simply press comma K. Similarly, if you had a file staged, you can unstage it using U. Finally, any staged, unstaged, or even untracked files can be discarded using X, and you can also discard hunks in the same way. Now let's talk about interacting with a remote Git repository. This repository I'm showing right now was originally cloned from GitHub, where I have write access. Let's push these changes that we've committed. To do that, we simply need to go back to the status buffer and press P. This gives you a number of options. Here are some flags that might be useful as well. Most of the times you'll be either using P or U on this screen, and sometimes E if you need to push it to a different branch or a different remote altogether. For now, we can simply press P, 
If you've never done this before, it will open a pop-up buffer to select the right remote. In most cases, you'd only have one remote, so just select that one and your code will be pushed. Note that when you do that, a new tracking branch on your remote repository with the same name as your local branch is created. Now let's talk about pulling code from a remote branch. What I've done is made some updates to this branch on GitHub. And I've also modified the same part of the file locally and then committed it. If we push this change upstream now, it won't work because the histories have diverged. To fix that, we need to pull the changes in from the remote. Note that if you tried doing this without committing the local conflicting changes first, Magit wouldn't let you do that because that would overwrite your work. Okay, to pull in the changes, we can just press capital F and then use P or U to select the branch that we want to pull the changes from. Now, our tf.py file shows up as unstaged with a nasty unmerge right next to it. If we go to this file, we can see the changed areas highlighted in red and green. Red shows the local changes, which would be overwritten if you just keep the upstream changes. And green shows the actual upstream changes. You can simply edit this file to get rid of the merge conflict. And in some cases that becomes very, very necessary. Or you can go back to this file in the status buffer and press E to open a new window called edif. This window allows you to select the bits from either your local changes or upstream changes. Here you can navigate between various conflicting hooks by pressing N and P. The buffer is split into three windows, upper left showing upstream, upper right showing downstream, and then the lower window showing the file how it is, as well as showing that one variant is called A and the other variant is called B. When you've navigated to a particular hunk, if you press either A or B, it'll keep the corresponding change and discard the other. In this case, we can just keep A. Note that the bottom file changed in response. We can quit this session by pressing Q, and then agreeing with the confirmation, we get a second confirmation asking if we were satisfied with the conflict resolution and if we'd like to save the file. Once back, we can open the status buffer again, and we'll see that the conflict has disappeared and the merging is complete. We can now commit these changes and then push again. Note that in a similar fashion, we can also merge from other branches locally through the menu that opens if you hit M. Okay, so this covers most of the basics that you'd need to use Git directly from SpaceMax. I'd like to cover two additional topics that I personally find very handy. The first one is Git Blame. If you press space GB or do meta x magit blame, it will change your file's look to show the last commit that changed a particular region right above the region, including the author. At any one of these regions, we can press B again to travel back in time to just before that commit was made. The second topic is stashes. Sometimes you have a working change that you can't quite commit yet, but need to do something else that would overwrite the change, like switch to a different branch. In these changes, you can store the changes temporarily into something similar to a commit, called a stash. To do this with Magit, just press ZZ on a file. Then you need to add a message for the stash and hit enter. We can now see that the stash shows under this new stashes section, and hitting enter on it shows the changes it contains. At any point, we can apply the stash back to our files by pressing A on it. All right, that's the end. This is the absolute minimum I think you need to know about using Magit for version control in SpaceMax. If this video was helpful to you, kindly consider sharing it with others and subscribing to the channel. You can also follow me on Twitter where I post about upcoming videos, and please leave a comment here or open an issue in the channel's repository for future video requests. See you next time.